announcements. Well, we do have a, a very significant announcement. I'm going to call on uh, Carrie Uni, the uh, chair of our staff parish relations uh, committee, to come at this time and uh, share with us a word. Good morning. Good morning. I'm kind of an early bird, so my family and I come to the 8 o'clock service, so I don't get to see you all as often as I'd like, so it's so nice to see you today. And um, I am the, I'm blessed to be the chair of Hilltop's Staff Parish Relations Committee. And as you know, um, we have been in search of a new pastor to assume Fred's position as he moves on to his duties as district superintendent on July 1st. As a committee, we discussed how we have grown under Fred's leadership and the vision for Hilltop's future. So today, we are so happy to announce that Bishop O intends to appoint Kelly McQuigg as pastor of Hilltop United Methodist Church. And the SPRC unanimous, unanimously affirmed Kelly's appointment. We had the pleasure to meet with Kelly and his wife, Shannon, to discuss calls that God's call in their life. We also discussed their passions and their strengths. Kelly has many gifts, including a love of missions, a heart to grow God's church, a love of community, and a passion for creativity in seeing how God can work within each of us. We wanna share more details about Kelly, Shannon, and their children, August and Edith. They call her Edie. Um, the ushers are distribu distributing some pamphlets right now that will give you some additional information to help you get to know them better. The Staff Parish Relations Committee is preparing for Kelly and Shannon's first Sunday with us, which will be on June 28th. Please make every effort to attend church on that date so you can welcome them into our family. We are also beginning to plan ways that you can meet them and greet them, and we'll share those plans with you as they are finalized. We will be sending a letter to the congregation this week announcing Kelly's appointment. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or any of the other Staff Parish Relations Committee members. And they are John Phelps, Cheryl Emery, Paulette Adams, Carla Lassonde, Kevin Phillips, Raleigh Utziner, or Jeff Adams, our Ad Council President. I want to take a moment to thank you all for your support through this process and your continued support as we progress through this transition. I especially want to thank Pastor Fred, Diaz Strom, and Stacy for their leadership. Lastly, a special thank you to everyone who is involved in helping to bring Kelly and Shannon to Hilltop. May God bless Kelly and Shannon as they begin their journey with us. Please prepare your hearts to receive them as well. We already love them, and I know you will too. May God bless you all. Thank you, Carrie. Um, you know, this whole thing about that we already love them, uh, Kelly and Shannon felt that before they met Staff Parish. Um, we'd been talking with them for quite some time, and as you read, they're from Texas, and uh, they're both, they're student, uh, Kelly's a student at uh, Asbury right now, and uh, to think of coming to Minnesota was, let's just say it wasn't at the top of their list. <laughs> and on the weekend when they came to visit, uh, it was my prayer that somehow they would know uh, after worship whether they'd be willing to come here. We, uh, Fred and I already knew we really wanted them. Uh, they hadn't met with your staff, parish, and leaders yet, but we already knew we wanted them. But I just didn't want them flying back to Kentucky having this kind of should we, shouldn't we. I, I certainly didn't want North Texas to get involved because <laughs> there would have been a tug of war between the North and the South, and, you know, Texas doesn't lose easily. And uh, I just, it was just my prayer that they would know on Sunday morning in their own minds. And Shannon, Kelly's wife, said to me, when we walked in the door, we knew. When we walked in the door, we knew. So 
the prayer was answered and uh, the worship was wonderful and we had a great afternoon talking together uh, with uh, Carrie and your uh, staff parish committee and a few of your other leaders and uh, by the end of the day uh, well Bishop O was here that day as a matter of fact and by the end of the day we were able to celebrate that they uh, they had been affirmed by your committee um, not officially we did it officially uh, last week over a Skype uh, where we actually put everything in place all the details you know but but they'd been affirmed unanimously and and then they affirmed their sense that this is where God was calling them so um, it's just a thrill uh, to be here and to uh, hear that announcement hear your applause I just want you to know Kelly and Shannon felt your love as a congregation before they knew you of course they'd already been praying for you and you'd already been praying for whoever it was that was coming uh, we're seeing those prayers answered uh, before our very eyes so that's why we made the announcement before prayer time so that uh, we keep everything in perspective and that the worries we have and the the unanswered questions and the things we don't know well the best place to take those is to the altar okay now you think oh yeah all right so while I was humming along with the choir everybody was listening huh <laughs> my apologies <laughs> oh my in Christ alone and it's all about Jesus we sing and we say these things and you know if we can live and speak and act and dream that way I'm telling you what we'll change the world but the question this morning is are you available for that and we say it and we sing it and we read it and we we know it's a good thing at least here but the question is are you available and so that's why in your worship folder I'm hoping you'll take that home tape that up on the mirror and tomorrow morning you will look at the sermon title and it'll say to you you'll be asking yourself the question it's not about just, I mean that's a question I should ask myself but it's a question for you how available am I to Christ and it's not automatic you know just try calling people up for a church cleaning day <laughs> I mean that's one of the least responded to uh, in my history of uh, lead churches and work with trustees and you know you always have that spring cleanup day and there's a big sign up sheets and there's a big announcement and then comes the day and sometimes you actually get nice weather and about four folks you know now here at Hilltop I'm sure it's different I'm sure you have to cater in a dinner because you probably have 47 people that come out but 47 it looks like they're you know maybe an additional hundred that have just yeah, not available and we have our reasons and we have we have all kinds of competing agenda but the plan the thing is to not let the competing agenda get in the way you know the story it's a resurrection story but it's it's anchored in the crucifixion it's that story of the Emmaus Road there were a couple of Jesus disciples you know and it's after the crucifixion and they've left Jerusalem and they are overwhelmed by the circumstances and they are on their way back to Emmaus and Jesus is actually walking with them and they don't know it this is how distracted they are and he appears to be a stranger and they can't believe that he seems to not know what's going on in Jerusalem so they tell him all about the crucifixion you can read this for yourself in four it's not our text for today but it sets it up in Luke 24 we read about them they're telling Jesus all about what happened to him and how sad it is and how it's the end I mean this 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 and this and then they say we had hoped that he was to be the one we'd pinned our hopes on this guy and what's worse today they can't even find his body all is lost so Jesus walks along with them and they get to Emmaus and it looks like Jesus is going further and they actually invite him in and say you know you should come in gathered at the table and Jesus takes the bread and when he breaks the bread you know what happens they saw him 
They recognized him. They could see something they hadn't seen on the road. It tells us something about how the circumstances around us can so distract us from the very thing that could deliver us. And that's how it is in your life and my life. Well, I won't make assumptions about your life, but I know how mine is. I know things that I didn't deserve come my way. I know some things that I well deserved come my way, and I, how am I going to deal with it? Things happen around us. We get circumstances, and, and it's not what we expected. Things look bad or things aren't going well. And, and the circumstances, the, the surrounding evidence starts to shape what I say and what I think. It shapes what I think is still possible. It starts to color what I think is no longer going to happen when I focus on the evidence that I can. That happens sometimes when pastors are leaving. I mean, there's a lot of promise here. There's a lot of hope here. Fred and Stacy have brought such vitality and vision to this church, and, and then you get word that he's leaving. And that's what brings us to our text for today. Because there was a day like that when Jesus was gathered with his disciples, and they were... And he starts talking about the end of his time with them in this way. They don't want to hear it. He'd mentioned it before. You remember Peter said to him, don't be talking that way, Lord. And, and Jesus said, you get behind me, Satan. But now they're gathered in the upper room, and you know this text. It gets read at funerals all the time. John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. <laughs> Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Get this, Philip says to him, well, Lord, just show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. And Jesus says to Philip, have I all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Get this part. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I'm leaving and going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word. And might the word of the mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in his sight. So Jesus is there giving his farewell to the disciples. Obviously, Jesus sees something that they don't see because he's handing it off. He's saying to them, wait, wait, wait a minute. 
You think the things that you've seen are something? You ain't seen nothing yet. You who believe in me, you will do the things that I've done, and you will do even greater things than I've done. You think that was true? Think there's any chance that the ministry of healing and the promise and the proclamation of good news in that little area of Palestine, do you think there's any chance that it might break out and go to places that Jesus couldn't possibly have gone just on his own? That maybe there might have been a group that could have believed in him and had the audacity to carry hope and promise in the light of Christ to places across the world? Do you think that could happen? Oh my gosh. We know it has. Greater things. You will do. It just depends what you're looking at, you see. When I get focused on the disappointment, or if I get focused on the pessimistic side, I've been told that I'm a glass half empty person. Any, do, I have any, do I have any company in here? Oh, you're all optimists. Huh? Oh, well then we can just stop. Huh? Yeah. Anybody of you know about the casting crowns? Anybody heard of casting crowns? Come on, you can lift a hand. I know you're Methodists, but... Crowns, you should look them up online this afternoon. You should listen to some of their music. Um, oh my gosh, they have such great music. Casting Crowns, you see, popular uh, recording group these days. Uh, the reason I think they're so wonderful is that their music, the words and lyrics of their songs is so theologically sound. It is, it's good music, and it's not overly repetitive like some contemporary music, but it's theologically sound. And they have a song out that uh, has these lyrics in it. If your eye is on the storm, you will wonder if I love you still. Ever been there? But if your eyes are on the cross, you'll know I always have and I always will. It matters what you see. It matters what it is. It matters who your vision belongs to. Not just in terms of how you feel. It matters in terms of what we will accomplish. It matters in terms of whether we are available to be the hands and feet of Jesus in a world that sorely needs him. That's our calling, you see. Greater things will you do than even the things that I've done among you. It matters how we see things. It's sort of reminiscent of that, that story. I don't know why it's always told this way. It's always told that the woman is taking her husband to the eye doctor. I'm not sure why it isn't the other way. But the story is told that she's talking with a friend saying she's taking her husband to the eye doctor tomorrow to get him a new pair of glasses so that he can start to see things her way. Any of you been? Yeah. I don't know why that's always told the woman taking the husband. So, you know, the way you see things is important. And so, actually, I brought glasses for all of you. So I want the ushers, if you'd hand the glasses out right now. Um, we have a few more pairs. I gave my pair away. But we want everybody to have a pair of glasses. Uh, so do all your kids have them? Okay. Uh, I've got four left here, so we can take care of a few people up here. And the ushers are coming with more. All right, just uh, give them a hand them down the row and get those handed out. And uh, What time is it? 11.10, huh? Uh, I hope the roast isn't in the oven. Uh, this is what it should look like after you get your outfit on. Cool, huh? Um, I'm going to take mine off for just a minute, but I am going to ask, that, is it, oh, you haven't, they haven't got to you yet. Oh, they're coming. They're right here. All right. I see a lot of doubtful faces out there. Humor me. Yeah, there's a few of them showing up. You know, I th the best, I mean, this, this light that goes around the perimeter is pretty amazing. But then, as I'm always kind of slow to do, I looked up. 
Oh my. Looking up is always a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. So here, I know this is not very, uh, this really isn't very sacred, but your pastor, he's always sending out selfies. And <laughs> honestly, the, the truth is, I've never taken a selfie. <laughs> but today, you got your glasses on? All right, there's the center section. And then we're going to get to this section over here. Got your glasses on? All right, there's that one. Okay, now we're going to get over here to the choir. Got to get over there. Uh, let's see, I think that'll work. There it is. And we're going to send this to Fred in the middle of worship at Park Avenue. No, no I'll wait. But did you know there are rainbows in the room? Did you know that? Isn't it amazing the way God created this earth? That something as simple as light, if you look at it the right way, you get to see this? And this is just a simple little experience of science and the, uh, the wonder of the way in which God operates. That something as simple as light has that kind of majesty to it, to it but often we don't see it. We think only in the rain. Well, that was a good place for the rainbow to be hung because it was in the middle of the storm, wasn't it? And that rainbow was a sign of promise. So here's the thing. There are changes coming. There are changes on the way. You know about it. Now you've seen a picture of Kelly and Shannon. Believe me, they're not superhuman. They've been through struggles. They've got stories to tell. But I'll tell you one thing I know about Kelly and Shannon. They are available to Jesus. They are sold out available to Jesus. Now you might want them to be available for your agenda. Most congregations have folks that are interested in that. And they do love you already. But the thing I know about Kelly is he is available to Christ. He's willing to listen to what's the promise and the vision, and he's willing to take the steps to go there, whatever the cost. And when they tell you about their travels and their trials in Morocco as missionaries, you'll understand the kind of depth that these folks have. <laughs> Just a couple of days after they left here, visiting here in late January, they're back in Wilmore, and little August has a... A little, what we thought was just a little bout with appendix, you know, needed his appendix out. Yeah, well, it wasn't just a little bout, ruptured. The guy was in the hospital for a week. So they've been there recently, they've been there a while back, and, and they understand. But in the midst of all of it, they're available to Jesus. And that's the question for you and for me. Every single day, are you available? Or do the distractions, do the distractions shape? what your hopes and dreams are? Do the distractions and the worries and the uncertainties and the unanswerable questions, do those get in the way and then we just sort of take things in our own hands? You know what happens when we take things in our own hands? Ferguson, Missouri. That's what happens. And some of us have Ferguson, Missouri in our own household because we've taken things in our own hands. And, and Jesus says to people, Worst of times is when it's most important to remember that I see things in you that you are failing to look at. I see hope and promise. I see goodness. And I just see that I can do things through you that you can't even imagine. And the question is, are you available for that? And it's easy to guess, but it is challenging to live that out. That's our calling. Are you available? People who are available talk to God and, and ask that God will help them see things that they can't see. People who are available look for what God might have them do, and as unlikely as it is, they go and do it. People who are available to Christ wind up in the middle of things they never could have imagined. 
that unfold because they were faithful. And in the times when it's into my own hands, well, those are the times when I'm least likely to see the greatness of God because I've decided to trust me. So do I know that it's all going to be fine? Well, actually, I do. Because if you read the end of the book, we win. Yeah. But the struggles that are here between now and then, that's for those days where we forget. And like in the lines from Casting Crown's song, we the storm. Mark Hall, the guy who writes most of Casting Crown's music right now, is in the midst of a storm himself. Kidney cancer. And Mark Hall has this strange, uncanny resemblance to Fred Vanderwerf and Kelly McQuaig. Oh, they didn't look just like him, but got beautiful wives, <laughs> surrounded by young children. He's in the middle of the, one of the most fruitful ministries contemporary music has ever known. And right now he's in the hospital recovering from surgery for kidney cancer. Now we don't know his prognosis, but he says, I'm available to Christ. I'm available to all that God called me to do. And God has said to me, I'm holding you in the palm of my hand no matter what. And that, that is what we're called to. And let me tell you, there are some things that make a change seem like nothing if we look to Christ. We'll find things that God's calling you to do and excitement that's available for you and people that in Mankato and beyond Mankato that their lives are going to be changed because of our faithfulness and our desire and our decision to be available to Jesus. That's how it works, you see. And so my prayer isn't just that it goes well here. No, I know it can. I know it's God's design. And I know Fred and Stacy have set it up for that. But how it goes and who participates, that's in our hands. You get to choose. And so I hope you'll ask that question every day. How available am I to Jesus today? Am I ready to go where he would send me? Am I ready to do the things he does? Am I ready to say the things that he says? Am I ready to let him be in me so that when people see me and when people see Hilltop, they see Jesus? Let's pray. Almighty God, we know that your plan is to be visible to all your children. The part we struggle with is that you've decided to depend on us, just like those two on the road to Emmaus. And in the worst of times, you helped them see that it was most important for them to run back and to tell others, Jesus is alive. Well, it doesn't change the awful things that happened in Jerusalem but it does change the future. And so we pray that for the lives of folks in this house today who are in the middle of their own Jerusalem with their family or at work or with their children or with their parents, we pray that the good news of the resurrection, that the presence of the living Christ that's with them even now, that they might be given eyes to see it, ears to hear it, hearts to know it, spirits to embrace it and actually become that presence. Heavenly Father, pour out your spirit upon this congregation that we together might be faithful to you, available to you in every way, and that we might move forth to announce the good news to all that Jesus Christ is Lord. We choose to be available. Amen.